Welcome to the Brigham Young University Family History Library webinar series. My name is Braden Knudsen. I'll be your host for this webinar today. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Um, I'd like to apologize for the little bit of a delayed start. Um, as we get started here with our introduction and our announcements, we'd like to invite you to participate in the polls that we have down at the bottom of the screen. Um, so our next webinar is tomorrow, Friday, December 1st at 4.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, and that webinar is titled Checking the Person Page for Accuracy in Family Search Family Tree. And that will be by Catherine Grant. Um, we'll get the, the December schedule posted tonight with all of the links to get into the webinars so that everybody will be able to log in for that as well. Um, tomorrow morning there will also be an email announcement that will come out that will have the links to get into the webinar and logged in as well. So if um, but if there are any issues getting in, just make sure to send us an email. Our email is here at the bottom of this announcements tab. Um, just send us an email and we'll make sure that everything gets, um, gets working correctly. So today we'll be pleased to hear from Gene Nesbitt, who will be giving a presentation titled Not Tech Savvy, Six Easy to Use Family History Phone Apps. Jean graduated from BYU with degrees in genealogy and library science. She was a stake family history director for 10 years before serving five missions with her husband, including twice to family history worldwide support. She is a mother of seven and a grandmother of 27. Her hobbies are people and genealogy. Um, and we, as we get things turned over to Jean, as she gets things loaded up on her end, um, we'd like to remind you about our comments and questions box on the right hand side of the screen. Any questions that you do submit, we'll make sure you get answered by the end of the presentation. We will turn the time over to Jean. Whenever you're ready, feel free to take it away. Okay. I Are you seeing this on the screen? Yeah. Go ahead and just make sure you hit your slideshow and you should be good to go. Okay. Perfect. All right. Cool. I'm excited to talk about uh, six easy to use family history phone apps today. A lot of times we don't feel like we know enough about technology to really use it and so it can be intimidating. So let's get started and talk about six easy to use phone apps. Ten years ago it took a table to hold all of these things. You'll notice the, you know, the, the music, the camera, uh, various things, the computer, and now all of those things you can carry in your pocket and you can access them by your smartphones. Plus, your phone can also have your genealogy information at your fingertips wherever you go. You can find names and submit to the temple from your phone. You can see which of your ancestors are famous. You can search records, upload photos, and more from wherever you are. Smartphones, tablets, and computers have changed and enhanced forever the way you do family history work. Now, he is speaking to the youth. In the past, this work of finding family names, documenting them, and bringing them to the temple was principally the work of older members of the church. Why was that? Because it required enormous time and effort. It would often begin with large reels containing microfilmed records. It meant painstakingly attention to dates and places, thick historical books with limited availability, and at times remote country cemeteries. Our ability to find our ancestors online has emerged only in the past few years with tremendous advancement in the past few months. The months ahead will bring even more availability while your generation has become extremely devoted to visiting the temple. In the months and years ahead you will be just as outstanding in finding and bringing names to the temple with you. This was given by Neil L. Anderson at Roots Tech, the huge genealogy conference they have every year in Salt Lake City in 20, 2014. And since that time, we have had amazing things happening, especially with our phone apps. The youth are fearless when it comes to technology, but are you? They've been raised with facts, fast action video games, movies, and technology. These are some of my grandchildren, and these are not staged pictures. This is, these are live. This is what they're doing. That was the lousiest corn maze ever. Help! Okay, a little pathetic that he can't find his way out of that corn maze. But do you feel that you are the only one that does not understand smartphones? There is no end in the creation of new family history phone apps. Can you keep up? No. That's why you are here to learn six simple phone apps. 
there are dozens of family history phone apps available and more will be coming. I'm only going to show you six and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with each one. Just kind of give you an introduction of what they are and how you can use them. Family history will not stay the same as it has in days past. For instance, um, is it important to learn? Is it important to learn what your smartphones can do? Yes, it is because family history should be about having fun, not frustration. So these are the only the only six that I'm going to show you, and there are more. Family Tree, Take a Name, Ancestry.com, Google Earth, Find a Grave, and Relative Finder. They're easy, fun, and helpful. So let's just, you know, take a brief glimpse at all of them. Family Tree app that you can find in your app store or you can find in FamilySearch.org. I will spend more time with this one than the others because there are several things you can do with this app, and it is a very useful app, and it will use your information that you, that is found in FamilySearch.org. It will show your family trees wherever you go. So, for instance, if you are in the city where your ancestors lived, rather than having to pull out, you know, I, we went visiting years ago um, to a place where my ancestors lived and I had printed off all these documents to take and oh, here's this and here's that and yet you know, all I needed today would be my, my phone because my information is right there on my phone. With this app you can find ancestors names that are temple ready and you can reserve the ordinances. You can also search historical records you can view and upload photos, documents, audio stories, and memories into Family Search right there on your phone. Unbelievable, but true. Okay, so first you're going to need to download Family the Family Tree app. It's called Family Tree. And once it's downloaded, then this is one way you can find names to take to the temple. If you have an a Android phone, look for the three bars the upper left-hand corner of your phone screen. If you have an iPhone, then there's three dots at the bottom or there's something at the bottom that tells you to click. And I don't have one of those, so I'm not sure what you do. But when you do, up comes this screen. And we're going to talk about ancestors with tasks first. You can see here on the right, the blue shows that there are things that need to be done with this person that's in your family um, tree in family search. The top one is my mom. And so... It, she's had, you know, she's had temple work done, but it might be that there's a duplicate of her in the file or something that needs to be corrected. And sometimes when you go in and make that correction or you combine somebody, then it makes their names temple worthy and you can select those and go ahead and take them to the temple. You know, this is how you would reserve ordinances to take to the temple. Same screen again and those three pop up. They're green, which indicate they are temple ready. If you click on them, then you can reserve them and take them to the temple. So we're going to click on Leah. And here she comes. She pops up. I wanted to see her ordinances done on Family Search because I cannot print from my phone. I don't know how to do that, but I know it can be done. So I'm into Family Search because it brought her up. I'm checking out her ordinances. It shows here the blue temple area that they are in the process of being done at least when I took this screenshot. And then this shows that I have reserved them from my phone and that I can print them off and take them to the temple. So I click on that. Up comes the temple ready cards that I can just cut where it shows and I can take those to the temple. If I'm not able to print it, here's the number down in the corner and I can take that number into the temple, show it to them and get the temple work done. It's really easy. It's just getting harder and harder to come with it, up with excuses not to do temple work because it can be fairly easy. Okay, let's go back. We want to search historical records from the phone. This is another fun thing. So here's my mom again. So I want to check her out and see what they have. I put in her name and this shows me records that there is information on her and that I can go check out and look at myself birth records in Utah and when she went on a mission, that kind of information that would be interesting to add to her history. And then I've got it so resourced so other people can find it. Here are other records that they came up with with her name. 
Now, this would not be good for me to look at because she did not die in Iowa. In Ohio, she died in Salt Lake City. This is another one. But she didn't die in California, so I would not even bother looking there. United States uh, Genealogy Bank obituary. She died in 1960. So this is another one I would not look at. So you don't need to go through everything you find. You know, just use common sense, do some subtraction, and you will find results. These two... Utah birth records, Utah county marriages, those would be good ones to check out because they cover the years in which she was born and when she married. Okay, so I want to check out a great grandmother and she was born in Sweden. So up came this information. This is her son and it shows that she was his mother. Other information, I pulled up her name. I looked under sources. And, whoops, I went too fast. And you can see that there are other sources that list her name. And that would be fun checking out and looking into. So there are other sources that you can find and look up if you're really interested in doing actual research. Now, from your phone, you can also upload into memories. This light green area that I have surrounded with red, if you put your finger on that on your phone, it will scroll to the you know, right and left, back and forth, and you can pick what you want. So you can't see ordinances, but if I were to swipe it to the left, ordinances would pop up. So this is my mom, and I want to check out her memories. Clicked on memories, and from my phone up comes memories of her. It doesn't always show all the memories that are there, but it would also include photos that are there. And it's been kind of fun because I pull up a grandparent and talk to some of my cousins who are so not interested in family history at all. I'll say, look at this. Here's grandma as a baby. It can be really fun to do. But I want to add some memories to my mom. So I'm going to click the plus sign. And up comes this option. I can add a document. I can write a story from my phone. I can record an audio clip. Or I can add a photo if they're on my phone. We're going to just do record audio, and it gives me an option to choose a topic, so I don't have to go off the top of my head if I don't know what I want to say, like um, what are some moments that impacted your life the most? And if I was talking about my mother, I would say in my head, you know, what are some things that impacted me with my mother, or how does she impact my life? Does that make sense? So then it gives you some ideas of what you might want to talk about, and you begin recording. This will pop up. When you click on Start, then you can start talking into your phone and give a little memory. And when you're done, it shows how long that memory lasts. And I have found that if you keep your memories to 5 or 10 minutes, it's a lot easier for people, especially in this day and age where everybody is you know, fast moving here and there, and not many people want to sit down for an hour and listen, although, you know, if they have the time, they would do that. But what I find, especially when I'm sending things like this to my children, they will listen for five minutes or ten minutes, and they've been grateful for that. If I were to upload something for an hour, I would get information back from them saying, oh, that was really interesting, but I didn't have time to listen to it all. So my advice, which is not, you know, set in stone, is for some memories, keep them short and simple and interesting for those who will be listening. And you can save this. When you push save, that will automatically go into their memories page in Family Search. You don't have to worry about uploading it any other way. Now this is my father's memory page. And I just wanted to show you that there are several audio clips that have been pasted into his page. The one at the top says testimony given by him was on a um it was on a jump drive that, that was given to me and I don't know how to take it from a, uh, a a jump drive, put it into, I don't know how to do that. So I actually started playing it on my computer and put my phone right up there and took a copy of it. I had it on my phone then, it was digitized, and I could upload it into Family Search. I know, I'm older, that's the way I do things. The younger generation could probably tell you how to change that. So memories, uploading quick and easy from your phone. It's amazing. Okay, so we've talked about ancestors with TAS, how to reserve ordinances, and how to search historical records. Then I want to talk about 
relatives around us. This is fairly new, just within the last six months. It connects to others, but they must be in the same room and they must have downloaded the Family Tree app. So everyone that wants to see if there's relatives around them must have downloaded the Family Tree app and they must have a Family Search account. Scan for, for friends. This will pop up and it kind of pulses those lines, boom, boom, to let you know that it's searching. And then if there are relatives in the room, they'll pop up and you can see that. They have to be within 100 feet. So this is my neighbor. We are 13th cousins three times removed. And I think this is just a fun thing. It, it really uh, gets people excited about family history to realize that we're a connected to a large family, not just the ones we know, but you know generations past. This only works on your phone. I have not seen it work on the desktop. It does not let you send it, which is sad. Maybe they will change that as it gets you know, more developed. It, I cannot save it to my gallery, which is another sad thing. This is a screenshot. I took a screenshot because I wanted to show you how it works. It's fun for family reunions, office parties, or with friends. My niece did this at her office, and <laughs> she said everybody was related to somebody in their office. They were so impressed. It is just a fun fun thing. It's just fun to see if or how you are related to other people. And it's fairly new, very recent. When finding names for the temple, don't be stuck in the past. And this is your new retro model. Wouldn't that be awful if we had to go back to a dial-up phone? Smartphones and tablets are so much faster. Get with the digital age, Marty. It's an iLily pad. Okay, I just want to explain that cartoon. I put little cartoons when I go from one phone app to another so that with webinars, one thing I like about webinars is that you can go back later, you can see part of it, come back to it later. As you're fast forwarding or going back, watch for the cartoon and then you will know, okay, this is where she talked about something different and you can find your way. It's kind of like a marker in finding your way through my presentation with a webinar. The second one I want to talk about app is Take a Name. It's another extremely easy way to find temple names. Three simple steps with your phone. Download Take a Name. It's called Take a Name. You can Google Take a Name and find it that way. Sign into your family search account with your name and password and your search begins. Now there have been some people say, well, you know, it doesn't have any proof. It doesn't have any sources. And that's true. It doesn't. And I'll show you this. But what is the important thing with any of these apps that give you names that you can take to the temple? Okay, so the first time you pull it up, it's going to tell you that it's not subsidized. So if you'd like to donate, that would be really nice. And the prices are fairly inexpensive, I think. They let you try it first before you need to donate. And I don't know how many times you can try it, you know, before it does. So back in April, I did a search and it searched over 13,000 names and came up with 50 ordinances that could be done. This shows that someone has already reserved this name. So it's not been completed or maybe it has by now because I did this in April. And this shows that there are three people that are not reserved that I can reserve if I want to. So I took this person's name and I requested it. And I can get the cards. However, I can't print from my phone so I went into FamilySearch.org with that number, brings her up super fast, super fast. Well, depending on how many you have in your file. For instance, my sister-in-law went into it this summer and it took her till 3 in the morning before it stopped scrolling. She was so excited because it was easy. After it does the initial search, it doesn't take that long. It's just you know, a minute or less, and it will find names for you to take to the temple. So to print the cards again, it's the same process because I cannot print from my phone. I want the temple ordinances. These were not reserved at the time. Print. I wanted to show you that in October, I did another search. This time, there were over 16,000 names, and 78 is compared to 13,050 ordinances done in April. What is really important? The importance is get a name and take it to the temple. 
And if you are still concerned that there are no documentation and it really bothers you, then go into FamilySearch.org because it will give you their information and trace it that way. Ordinance work, ordinances will soon be completed and the guilt is gone. It's really about getting the work done more than getting rid of the guilt, right? So, I love Take a Name and Family Tree. They both are similar. They help you find names to take to the temple. <clears throat> and they are fast, easy, and effective. So give them both a try. I have seven children. Several of them have gone into both of these applications, and they have pretty well picked all the one, you know, all the names that have been ready to reserve. And I've come across some people that a lot of family members have gone into these and found the names. So if your family is not into this yet, go out there, find it while you still can. This is an exciting way. As far as I know, these names are generated from indexing when people go out and index and so that's why when I went back six months later indexing is still going on uh, more connections were found so if they all are taken one time go back again give it a month or two and then go back and check it out again I love it and what I love is that I'm taking my own family names to the temple and so are my children even my grandchildren will say oh we've got to go to the temple I'm going to take a name that I find myself Okay, cartoon, genealogy service. Whoa, talk about junk DNA. I have heard about DNA for 15 years. I did not feel it was that important. I didn't feel it was that serious. So I, I, didn't, I didn't do anything about it until I went to uh, Roots Tech last year. DNA results, they are fun and informative. I've had to repent over that. Ancestry.com is the third app. I love it. it you can do a lot of things in Ancestry.com including DNA. It does more than just store your family trees. Hints showing as leaves of possible documents found on your ancestors. There are documents here that are not on family search. DNA tracking and matching. This turned out to be way more fun than I ever thought possible. You can also search historical records here. You can create it ancestors life stories including a timeline with added historical events I've talked before about add historical events when you write a history on one of your ancestors because it makes them more real you know like the Napoleonic Wars in the 18 you know 1812 add some of that stuff and it makes them seem more real more like your own personal time machine back in history it does it automatically in ancestry.com all of this and more can be done from your phones. I think that's exciting. Both Ancestry and Family Search, they are similar, but they are different, and it's good to check out both of them. Ancestry, you've got, you know, your tree, your hints. I've got 570 DNA settings, and the hints show as little leaves. A lot of mine, almost all of my ancestors, have little leaves worth checking out, including the census. This is one place where you can go and find information on censuses. So here's my grandmother. You can see off to the right, it's already fleshing in some of her life story. When she was born, these are her parents. This is a, uh, my great-grandmother, second great-grandmother, talks about her family, that her brother died. You know, this brother died in, in George in 1836. The next one died in 1836, her two brothers at the time. Fleshes in a story, adds in histories, just makes it fun. So using Ancestry, I wanted to check out some of their records that they had available on uh, Andreas. This is his son, so it picks him up with his son. And then this is the city directory, Salt Lake City, where he was living. Here's a copy of it. I was able to enlarge it and read. He was a machinist, and this is the address of where he worked at the time. Now, I didn't have to go to the library. I didn't have to search through books. It's right there, right in front of me. I think it's just an exciting thing to do. And it was on my phone. I could do that while waiting in a doctor's office for something. Okay, we're going to explore DNA options because, you know, I'm a convert to this now. DNA. Uh, they had a cell on it at Roots Tech. So I, my husband and I both went in and had it done. And I was really skeptical, but it's turned out to be really kind of fun. Shows that majority of my ancestors right there are in England and a few in the United States because uh, that's where 
my grandparents were born. Overall, it shows that I'm 100% Euro European, zero American. There is no American, Native American. Great Britain was no surprise, 85%. But what surprised me was Scandinavia. My grandfathers, both of his parents were Swedes. So that surprised me. And in Ireland, that was a little bit of a surprise. And then it shows... You know, okay, it goes a little bit deeper, further back than just the immediate, like Ireland, Wales, Scotland, France, England. Also goes into Europe West, Belgium, Germany, Czech Republic. I had an aunt that was raised in the Czech Republic. And I, you know, I thought, whoa, this is great. I mean, something in common. And then even further, Finland, Northwest Russia. So what it's telling me is that, okay, my ancestors did not start in England and stay in England. They started other places and eventually ended up in England. And there's a lot of history in these countries that I'm showing you throughout the years and years and years. You can have your DNA done by another company and it will have other markers and it will come up with similar but different results. It just depends on what they're looking for. But it is still interesting to me. Now, this is my husband's. Shows that, you know, he, besides England, comes from Spain, Portugal. Uh, then it goes to Eastern Europe, which is interesting to have that kind of background. Into Italy and Greece. And then this was a surprise, European Jewish. So I just think this is kind of fun to sit and think that, okay, we did move, we did start here, our our ancestors, there was a lot of wars going on through the ages. Perhaps because of the wars, move from one place to another. And when we get to, uh, you know, a dead end, we can think, oh, well, who knows where we might have come from. It just, I don't know, it just makes me feel like somewhere along the line, I am connected to people from Europe many, many years ago. So they get closer to home. There's 81 shared ancestor hints six are starred which means they're really close and 534 fourth cousins are closer i want to see my dna matches up comes diane i am pretty sure she is my first cousin however there's no family tree so i can't prove it but these did have family trees and i am connected to these three this one particularly, we are second cousins, and she doesn't live far from me. She just lives, you know, a couple of miles away. These names are on my my family tree as well, really closely connected. So it's kind of fun because we've sent messages back and forth, and I'm finding that I have relatives I never knew I had. Just fun and exciting. My teacher texted a list of supplies we'll need for this new school year. A laptop, a thumb drive, some software apps, portable recharger. What the heck is pencil and paper? Okay, you know, 10 years from now, we won't think this is funny. Because, you know, will our grandchildren and great-grandchildren know about paper and pencil? I'm sure they will, but, you know, such a needed tool in ages past. And now, things are changing at a rapid rate. Fourth app I want to show you is Google Earth. This is a fun app. It's very similar to Google Maps, but just a little bit different. You can um, take it to locate. It will take you to locations and show photos. Visually see homes or churches where your ancestors lived. Google Maps will give directions and photos, the same as Google Earth. But Google Earth lets you explore the areas and pinpoint landmarks and natural boundaries. So with Google Maps, you need an exact address most of the time. Google Earth, you can just put in the name and see what happens. Try them out and see what you can find. So Google Earth on the left, Google Maps, you can see that it's the same. They access the same photos. You can tell that by looking on the left side of the house. The cars are the same cars that are parked in the same place. And this is my grandparents' home. So... Like I said, you need an exact address. The other one, you just need the name of a place. That will take you to the place. Google Earth will as well, but it also shows pictures of other things. 
It's a fun way to find names of churches in small towns, and this is what I wanted to show you. Here is the little parish of Hook. This is in Yorkshire, England. I've been there. So I wanted to find the church where I had found some of my ancestors buried. So I went in closer. I said that I wanted to look for churches. You'll notice here's the field, same field. I want to look for churches, and they show this. It will pop up on Google Earth. Okay, there, there's a church there, and I was checking out the churches and came to this one. And it's been 10 years since I've been there, or longer, 17. So I don't really remember you know, what it looked like, but I knew it was a small church with lots of trees. So I went in and did the little people search on the road, and there is this tree. I fell in love with this tree when we visited there. There's the tree. This is the picture I took. It's covered with green moss. I love it. It just, I love that tree. It was very fascinating to me. And this is the parish where some of my ancestors are buried. But look at the, look at, it shows, this looks like a little foot, doesn't it? Kind of toes. And it shows that recently, whenever this Google Earth picture was taken, that plants are still growing in between the toes or the roots of this tree. I found it fascinating. I could look at it. I then was able to go in because I had the church's name. I could put in St. Mary's Church in Hook, and it brought this up, which shows that it is the church. Now, if I want to search church records, I would go in into Yorkshire, look for Hook, or look for St. Mary's Church in Hook, and then I could look for their records. You can see this another view of this parish. I thought it was just really, I've done other parishes, but this one is my favorite because of that tree. I know, it was probably more exciting for me than for you. Okay, here's another one, instance. I wanted my great, well, over 500 years ago, I had an ancestor who built a bridge in Falkenberg in Sweden. I did not know the name of the town or anything. So I put in the bridge name, and up came the town, and you can see the picture of the bridge. My aunt had me several years ago type up a translation that someone had made of his diary, my grandfather, you know, way back a ways Rex, of his experience of building this bridge to where the people wanted it. They, they took in two bids, bids. Another bid was up further in the river, and my grandfather said I, he wouldn't build it there. The current was too swift. So they went with the other team, and before the bridge was finished, the current had swept the bridge down, and so they came back to my grandfather and asked him to build this. So he did. I thought that was fun. Okay, here it is. This is the name of the city, and that's a picture of the bridge. And here's a picture on top of the bridge, so I can actually look at the bridge. This uh, was originally a toll road, and it was built for horses and handcarts and buggies and things like this. So then, you know, several hundred years later, when they went through Sweden and they were shoring up all their bridges to make them safe for cars, and they came across Grandpa's bridge and they found it so solidly built that they left it intact. Now, over the years, they have gone in and they have shored it up. They have made some, you know, repairs along the ways and, and made it strong. But 500 years later, here's this bridge. You know, I'm, I don't want to tell my husband that we don't need to go there. I think it would be great to go there, so I don't tell him if you see him. But what a great thing if I never make it to Sweden. Here I can see the bridge, and I can add these pictures to my ancestors' history because there isn't a lot of history that I'd have of them other than this bridge, which still stands 500 years later. To me, that is fun, finding it off of Google Earth. Let's combine two apps. Let's combine Ancestry and Google Earth. So I go into Ancestry on my phone and I found the 1920 census. Here's my grandmother and her children. She was a single mom at the time. Here is the street that she lived on and here is the house number of her home. So I took that information, her street and her house number, and I put it into Google Earth and here it shows me her house. I enlarged it, and sure enough, this is my grandmother's house. The house on the top there was a kind of like an apartment she had built when she was still working, and then when she retired, she had uh, income until she died. So that was kind of a nice thing to do. There's my grandma's house, found from using two apps. One 
the census and to Google Earth. I've also done this with a grandfather that did not live in Utah. It was another, you know, another state. I was able to find him in the census and then go and find him on find the house on Google Earth. It is fun. This just really makes my ancestors seem like real people because they had homes that you could look at. Okay. The world is in a sorry state, Norm. Anywhere I go, everyone I see is staring down at their phone. Really? I haven't noticed. Well, isn't that the truth? Anywhere you go. While out and about, take your phones and take them with you to cemeteries because they could be a real useful tool in cemeteries. Fifth app I want to talk about is Find a Grave. It's very similar to Billion Graves but slightly different. They both let you search for a person's name or cemetery's name. And remember, when you're looking for a woman's cemetery information or death date, you will look under her married name rather than her maiden name. You can see photos of headstones if they have been uploaded. And it's surprising because some have been. It will let you know the person is buried there even if no photo has been uploaded. And you can upload your family photos of headstones onto both sites. So you can go out to the cemetery, take a picture of grandma and grandpa or mom and dad's headstones and put them into, into Find a Grave or to Billion Graves. Try them out. Pick the one you like. But I'm going to show you Find a Grave because normally people talk about Billion Graves. But I just want you to know that there are options very similar, just a little bit different. So here we have a request with find your grave. So I might want, I can't go to Wyoming, but I would like someone to go there and find the grave of one of my ancestors. Actually, I don't have any ancestors that was from Wyoming, but if I did, that's what I'd want them to do. And if they are, somebody will see the request and then they will go and take a picture and upload it into, into uh, find a grave or a billion grave. This is my parents' headstone on Memorial Day, and those those little, you know, um, flowers are from what my daughter and I, we get on Mother's Day, and then we save it till Memorial Day, and we put it on my parents' grave. I think it's kind of a fun thing. This is my parents' grave, and I'm looking at my mother's information. And it will also show other family members who have passed away. Not all of them are buried in the same cemetery. Interesting thing was, these are her family members, this is one of my older brothers who recently passed away. And a week later, a week later, I was going through this, and here he is. It's already up there on to find a grave. I don't know who posted it. I don't know how it got there. But within a week, there's his information. Okay, we're going to go back to my mom. It lets you see a bio of her. You can type up a bio and a little bit about her life. And then it tells you who created that bio. So when I first wrote the bio... I was a little bit uptight because somebody had questioned that she was married to my dad. And so I, you know, I kind of was a little bit not a happy person. And I wrote this big, long thing. And one of my nephews came up and said, Aunt Jean, you were kind of like you know, really not in a nice mood when you wrote that bio on Grandma. So I went back in and edited it. So I can do, you can do that. I made it a lot shorter and a lot nicer. And I took out mean things like don't question me kind of thing. I don't know. Just be nice. Okay, so I want to see more. More of what's going on. Clicked on more, and you can add GPS coordinates. So if you know how to do that and how to find it, others who know how to do that can take that information and walk right to the headstone. You can share that inf information with others, and you can also save it and pin it for others to see. This screenshot I made in June this one I made earlier this month. Look at this. You can They've added more buttons. You can edit, you can delete, and you can link relatives together. Both Billion Graves and find, um, take um, where I am. Both of these apps have been under uh, updating. They said they were going to be updating and would be done by July, but it looks like they are still in the process of updating these, and it's only going to get better. So... Give it a shot. Give it a try. Okay, so here you it will take you to the location. and will show you how to get to the cemetery if you're in that city. If no one has taken a photo and uploaded it, you will not find them. 
So it's important. Take your phone with you, take a picture, and then upload it to find a grave. This is uh, information that shows where this person is buried, which is to your right. It doesn't have a picture of his headstone, but it tells you exactly where he is buried. And you can go into the sexton's office with this ID number, and he can tell you where he's buried. Or she, whoever's in the office. doesn't have a picture of his headstone, but it does have a picture of him. We have used this on Memorial Day. We have used our phones and gone in and couldn't find somebody, and, and lo and behold, pull up our phone app, and they've been able to direct us to where they are buried. A lot of people have children who uh, do different things on date nights. This is my son and his wife. We took some pictures to send to the website Find a Grave. We cleaned off a few gravestones, too. So, you know, what does a family do when you have a family historian as the mom? You do creative things for your date nights. Fun things. And you know what? Nobody in our family is related to anybody in that cemetery. That's just something they wanted to go do. Take a pizza, head to the cemetery, take some pictures. The miracle of cell phones is connecting us worldwide, helping us to find ancestors, where they are buried without even leaving our homes. We can pinpoint where they are buried. It brings joy and happiness in seeing physical evidences that your ancestors lived and died. I mean, I just love it. I think it is great. What you doing, Brewster? Someone's FaceTiming me. Who? Oh, not sure. He doesn't talk much. He's kind of dumb. Your phone's not even on. That's your reflection. Okay, so do you want to show your friends how smart you are by letting them know who's famous that you are related to? So let's check out famous relatives. This is the last app I'm going to show you, which is Relative Finder. And... You Google it to find Relative Finder. You sign in with your family search username and password. Click on Show Groups, then select like a presidents, movie stars, famous Europeans, etc. Famous people you may be related to, as well as how you are, are related, like first or eighth cousins or thirteenth cousin, four times removed, etc. No sources are provided to prove your relationship, but it's fun and exciting guide to see who's who in your family tree. Give it a try and then let others know why you are so special. Family, a relative finder is available to use on your, uh, on your computer at home, on your desktop. But this is a phone app, which is so fun because it can go with you wherever you go. I don't have the you know, exact address for it, but you can always Google relative finder. Up this comes, log in with your family search information, sign in with your username and password, and up it comes. And I don't want to see the groups. There's lots of groups that you can go into to see if you're related. In fact, it will even allow you to start your own group. But just as a brief little thing, European royalty. This M stands for male, F stands for female, King Edward II. That's impressive. Movie stars. Nobody younger than me really knows who Betty Grable was, but we're ninth cousins three times removed. All right. I want to look at other groups. And this is something that has evolved since last year. So you can even create your own if you wanted a family group, or if you wanted to say a, a group of a, a church group that you're in and you want everyone to, you know, be together in a group, you can start that. These are the groups that are already established, like constitution signers, declaration signers, entertainers, or a lot of LDS, like prophets, prophets' wives people on the Mayflower, movie stars, scientists, sports figures, U.S. presidents, etc. But they have other groups. And so I picked a group that I knew for sure there was nobody of my relatives in this group, and it turns out to be the Salem Witch Trials. Well, these three are all related to me. I can't believe it. Eighth cousin, nine times removed. Being male, female, you know, whatever. It takes me on back. Let's look at some other groups. Famous Europeans and reformers. We're going to look at famous Europeans. Uh, that's not bad. If I'm with a group of people that are interested in plays, I could talk about William Shakespeare as a relative or Isaac Newton. If I'm with a lot of scientific people, talk about fun. Okay, let me show what it looks like. I wanted to check out reformers because this is the 500th year of Martin Luther tacking those thesis on the door. So let's look at some reformers here. John Lathrop, 
my 13th cousin seven times removed. I scroll way on down. This start. This is our common ancestors at the top. Scroll on down, and there we are. Here he is. If I wanted to look him up and find more information, see who he, you know, who is related to, I could just click here, and it'll take me into Family Search and his information. I can follow this information backwards or coming down this way to see how I really am related. But this is just kind of a fun thing. It's not documented, like I said, but you can go in into his page on Family Search and find his information. I think this is great. I think this is fun. It is a desirable thing to be well descended, but the glory belongs to our ancestors. This is by some Greek biographer. So in all reality, it is really fun to say you're related to people, but honestly, the glory belongs to them. In the meantime, it is still fun to say that you're related to this person or that person. Um, this is David A. Bednar, and he is speaking to the youth. My beloved young brothers and sisters, family history is a vital part of the work of salvation and exaltation. You have been prepared for this day and to build up the kingdom of God. You are here upon the earth now to assist in this glorious work. Daily, technology grows and improves. The youth love technology and are quick to learn new websites and phone apps as fast as as they become available. So a lot of times I will turn to my kids and say, how does this work? This is new, and they will show me how it works. The rising generation was indeed born tech savvy, and they will help you. Phones are not just a way to communicate, but are becoming the future family history libraries for those who follow us. Our great grandkids, our grandkids, our children are going to be using more and more our phone apps and other technological advices. So. Let smartphones help you in this important work. They are effective tools in gathering, documenting, recording, and preserving your treasured photos, stories, histories, and documents. Smartphones and tablets are top of the line today. 10 or 15 years in the future, we will laugh that we ever called them smart. She's looking at her phone. Everyone in this family is sitting around staring at their phones. Fine. I'll sit and stare at mine, too. Don't sit and stare at your phones. Try these apps and put to use what you've learned. These six apps and others yet to emerge will help bring about great work in your families. Family Tree, Google Earth, Relative Finders, Find a Grave, Take a Name, and Ancestry. There's no doubt these apps are fast, fun, easy, and helpful. Speaking to youth again, the center of family history is the home. We need to help our young people. Oh, I guess he's speaking to grown-ups. We need to help our young people develop a love for this work. Our young people are excited to learn about the lives of family members, where they came from, and how they lived. Some become so excited about the work that they lose track of time and are disappointed when they have to stop. This is from Quentin L. Cook, Root Tech, 2017. Because families can be eternal, it is important to learn how to be successful in our family history work. This was our son's wedding a couple of years ago. And I point this out. This is one of my favorite pictures. These three kids are screaming their heads off. I wish you could have seen the pictures of the parents all trying to make them <laughs> calm down. Families are eternal. Now pick up your phones and have some fun. Thank you for joining us. All right, thank you very much, Jean, for the wonderful presentation. Um, it looks like at the moment there aren't any questions, but if there are any questions, if anybody has any, please feel free to write those into our questions box. It's on the right-hand side of the screen, and we'll make sure we get all those questions answered. Um, this presentation today has been recorded, and we will post it onto our Family History Library YouTube channel, where you can come back and um, share it with friends, watch it again, and continue to learn. Make sure you follow us on our social media sites, on Twitter and Facebook, to stay up to date with what's going on here at the BYU Family History Library. Um, and if you go to our website, on the link here at the center of the screen, you can find lots of other resources for family history as well. We'd love your feedback. Please let us know what you thought about today's presentation and how we can help, how we can work on improving our um, 
our webinars here at the BYU Family History Library. Again, we thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you back again tomorrow. Have a great evening.